it is very sad reflections that today our world is full of conflicts, violence, and insurgents stem from sort of sources. Think Ukraine, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, among others. In the last 10 years, I have been trying to find a solution to find and to solve this old problem. Because I do believe this old problem always come up with all type of solution as well. I'm from Indonesia. My dad is a Muslim. But when his, die, when his father died, his, his brother, who is uh, married to a Catholic family, raised him. My mom is a Muslim, but we raised with a very strong Japanese culture, with mostly Japanese culture adopt Hindu type of teachings. His grandmother is a puppeter. So he used to invite me to watch the Mahabharata and Ramayana, and then she always whispered me one thing, that I will remember the whole of my life. Our duty as human being is to humanize others and don't look down others. So when now I'm a father of the wonderful son, I can relate why my father to send me to this Islamic boarding school. I was disappointed though, not because of its simple facilities, sleeping on the simple plastic pastra together with other 20 students in dingy library, but there was no girls in my class. It was dead boring, you know. <laughs> so amid my boredom, I make a friend with a guy named Hassan. He taught me how to speak Arabic, speak English, and martial art. Soon he became my idol. So when he graduated, he told me that he got a scholarship to study in Pakistan. I didn't really surprise. Unlike me, I won't be eligible to that scholarship because I broke the very strict school code for not having relationship with girls. Because when I reached 17, I cannot resist. I fall in love with the daughter of my own teacher. <laughs> Worse than that, I took her date a couple of times. So I was caught, I was punished, and I was labeled as a tainted student. So I won't be eligible to that scholarship, but I said to myself, okay, one day I will find my own ways, but I wanted to do to the completely different direction. I want to study in the West. So shortly graduated from that school, I went to study in a local college in Central Java, Indonesia, and working as a tourist, uh, a tourist guide with my pidgin English. You and me, photo, photo. Uh -huh. <laughs> Together in the corner. Uh -huh. Do you understand? Oh, yes, I stand under you. <laughs> so, <laughs> through hard work and persistence, not only I was able to speak English, but I was hired to work for the Washington Post, Southeast Asia Bureau covering in the regions. Through this job, when I covered the first Bali bombing, I arrived on the site early in the morning. Police hasn't cordoned off the area, so I witnessed blood. People died. I was crying inside. What kind of human being has capability to do such atrocities? I was wondering, why Bali? Bali is the island of God. It is the central of Indonesian tourism. What will happen to the rest of the countries, you know? Two months later, I was sitting in press conference, and the police distributed a leaflet, hood, hood, who uh, like uh, perpetrators, who's behind the attacks. And I would look at, oh my God, my jaw dropped in shock. It was my own roommate, Hassan, 
was one of the Bali bombers. I ran off the press conference, rushed to the beach nearby, and I asked myself, why him? He's such a loving kid, caring husband, soft-spoken, where he can commit such violence. It was a watershed moment in my life. It was also a turning point in my life. So since that very day, I have very personal questions. Why a normal individual can get involved in these political violent activities? And then since that day as well, I have been embarking on my personal journey, interviewing hundreds of terrorists inside and outside the jail in Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Yemen, and recently I just got back in the border of Turkey. So in 2005, I won British Evening Scholarship to study at St. Andrews University in Scotland. It was in 2006 I was introduced to an NGO trying to help former convicted uh, political violent activists to integrate to society. And I said to myself, if this person has an involved for 400 years in conflict and that can be rehabilitated, I want to do the same when I come back to Indonesia. So okay, I said to myself, using my own savings, I established an organization called the Institute for International Peacebuilding as a way to understand why normal individuals become a terrorist, why some of them leave, when some of them stay, and what can we do as a society to stop that spread of violence. It was a very crazy idea, right? I'm a UK graduate, so working in a very fancy organization, but I started this, and there was no self-help book to talk to this kind of subject, and there is no terrorism for dummies book, you know. <laughs> so I said, if no one has done it, why can't give a shot? Then I come back, I ran this cacao business in central Sulawesi. One of my first clients was Afghanistan fighter. In the 80s, he fought together with Osama bin Laden, together with my own friend Hassan. When I interviewed Hassan inside the prison, he told me, the scholarship that he received 15 years later, in fact, a scholarship to study in Pakistan, then he studied in al Ittihad al-Islami, a camp, military camp, together with other militants. And then my client went on to participate in military train, uh, went on an attack, and then he was busted and released. But for my client, jihad is not new things. His own brother was involved in the atrium bombing, another brother was involved with him, another brother was involved in the atrocities in, the centra, uh, in central Sulawesi. He himself married to a clandestine, or a member, a daughter of a clandestine organization, Darul Islam. His uncle involved in the attempt to kill my first president in the 50s. So for these people, violent jihad is a family business. <laughs> Every, so this case illustrates how kinship and family play such important role to push normal individuals to get involved in this violence. Looking at his CV, my God, this guy is so creepy, no way for us to integrate to society. But I give a shot, because I do believe no one born as a terrorist. So I run this chocolate business. I hired him, he worked in my chocolate business. Every day he comes, but one day he never show up again. I was so worried what happened to him. If he come back, <laughs> I will have big problems. Little did I realize that he got second wife. He was busy with his second wife and forgetting my chocolate business and no longer interested in terrorism. <laughs> my business failed. But I learned one thing. Being jihadist in Indonesia is a part-time job. <laughs> it's not full-time one. So the best way to stop them is just occupy them. Because a lot of activity and they forget. <laughs> so then I get another one, a client came, released from prison, and she told me, I want to start new business now, Huda. What? Car hire business. Why? Because I was involved in the network, in charge for logistics. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so... But one thing, you have to sign a contract that you have to look after the business, okay? Okay, look after the business. Guess what? 
he threw off, he threw off the car and never come back. Fail again. But I learned one thing. Jihadis are very good at embezzling people money using good book. <laughs> You sing God names. And another one came to me again, released terrorist. He was involved in a number of atrocities. Who do I want to start new business? So what? And I look at this guy. <laughs> Should I trust him? You know, I failed two times. And I did a background check. Apparently, he was involved in Boy Scout in Indonesia. He graduated in one of the technician, one of the best universities in Indonesia. Of course, he's married and two kids. He's trustworthy. And we start the business with T-shirt business. And one day he called me, the business went well. Come to see me. I keep one T-shirt for you. And he kept the T-shirt. And I look at the T-shirt. Long life Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Jihad is the only solution. Oh, who does is cool? Not only that, I give you cool brand. What is this? AK-47. I, I said, okay, okay, stop the business. I don't want to be part of Jihad industry. And by the way, I never give these jihadists fresh money because if I give them fresh money, I will be able for financing terrorism. So, okay, this business fail again. <laughs> this is another one. Another realist terrorist came to me. I want to start business. I happen to run a fish pond business. The harvest time was fine, but the problem start with waiting this tiny fish to be big. <laughs> this terrorist was lonely because he is only talking to the fish. <laughs> when he got a call from his friend, apparently his friend was on the police list, he got caught up again, lent him to the jail. Fail again. There was a point in my life, I was questioning whether this is really possible to rehabilitate this guy. Because, you know, we should lock them in jail and just throw the key. Maybe this is the best solution. But then one day I got a phone call, hi Huda, this is me, Yusuf, 2003, come out from school. Who? Yusuf? Yusuf who? School? No, 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 from school, from prison. Why school? Yeah, because for me prison is school. Okay, so, and I was about to question this and my parent, and especially when my parent-in-law said to me, he tapped my hand, Huda, you just get real business, you know, you marrying my daughter, you know. So, okay, give a shot. Apparently, this guy was involved in Mindano, fighting for two years, get busted. I covered the story, so he feel comfortable with my approach. And then, learning from my previous mistake, I started to realize, okay, I don't want to stumble in the same thing. I came up with triple H strategy. The first H will be heart. So, to talk to these terrorists, you have to win their heart. How do I win their heart? So, I said to him, okay, you want to change the world, so the way to change the world, let's look at the social problem. So we came up with an idea to give an opportunity to drop out school. So my program is for drop out school and drop out terrorists. So he feel comfortable, he earned trust. And then after that, after I win the trust, I give them hand, hand with a skill. So transforming his skill from using AK-47 to fry duck. And then the last one will be head. In a culinary business, in restaurant business, you cannot choose your customer. Everyone come, you have to serve. When you serve, you respect. The problem of the people in the network, they don't want to respect others. If your coffee is not good, and your, com uh, your client is complain, you have to what? Listen. These people don't want to listen. So, I never ever ask him to change his belief or ideology, but because of the social inter 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 interactions, he revisit the way he understood. So, I feel comfortable with him, so I took him in a conference organized by Google in Dublin three years ago. We organized 150 former, former terrorist Christian, Catholic, Hindu, neo nationalism So, all the formers get together and let, we talk. What can we do now? Yusuf understand that he changed persons and he come back, okay, let's we do something, we have a problem in worldwide, so we create a network of entrepreneurs or social entrepreneurs, 24. We went to the prison and help others. So my model of business is like multi-level marketing. Member, get members. <laughs> Not only that, it was in 2013, one of the victims came to my cafe and Yusuf served. And the victim told Yusuf, Yusuf, 
I cannot forget, but I can forgive. So they start to talk, and both of them, the victims and the former, the non-violence together. We went to boarding, uh, we went to school, boarding school, talking that we have to stop on this violent activity. So it was good platform, but not only that, also the Christian fighter come to my cafe. So Yusuf, the Christian fighter, talked to the Christian how to start to win, you know, like to, to work together. And by the way, I forgot to tell you, the guy who helped me to run this restaurant is Austrian guy, a Christian, his name. Imagine Christian teaching Yusuf how to cook. And, and this is my cafe, so it's the cafe, it's not promotion though, but you can come. <laughs> <laughs> so it's cafe, it's running well, it's become the hub of many young people to get together. But I never put this as a jihadi house club, it's just, it's just, it's just cafe, you know. So it's, we feel well, people eat, we started from scratch, and not only that, my government liked the program, and Huda can we adopt? And now, Yusuf teach the Indonesian government how to talk to me. So Yusuf talk to them, this is how you should talk to terrorists. And then I write down the manual. So I now have the terrorism for dummy manuals. <laughs> okay. uh, alone, I can help 15. Together with your help, we can create more Yusuf. Thank you. <laughs>